My name is Megan Gutshaw. I'm working on my Sinatra section project for the Flatiron software engineering curriculum. Um, I already coded most of it out and for my half hour video I'm going to add a feature. So I will show you which feature I'm going to add. <clears throat> so in order to show you, I need to first run bundle install. So we have all our gems installed. Then I'm going to run rake db migrate to run my migration files and create my tables that I had coded out already. And I'm going to run my seeds um, just to seed my program so that there's data there. And I'll run shotgun as well to start uh oh, start a dummy server. Well, it would help if I could spell it right. I do that a lot. Shotgun. And this is my project. Um, this is the login page. And this is one of my users that I made up, Betsy. Her name's actually Beth, <laughs> Beth Horn. My, my neighbor's a trombone player, so subliminal messaging, I think. Um, so what I want to implement, <clears throat> this is her uh, dashboard page. You can see her user details. She has the option to create a new medication. And here's a list of her current medications. So when I click on the name of one of her current medications, it takes me to her medication detail page. And right now, <coughs> it takes me to her medication page. And right now, there's two buttons, one to edit her medication and one to delete her medication. And notice that I colored the delete red to sort of give the impression that this is a permanent action. It's like, you know, red danger alert, that kind of thing. Um, also, here is a list of the reactions that she has recorded that are associated with her medication, Wellbutrin. And she has the option to record a new reaction right here. Um, and she can also return to her user dashboard. So right now she has these two buttons. What I want to do is add a third button with the option to stop taking the medication because I'm worried that when the user stops taking a medication, they may accidentally press delete. They might say, oh, well, I'm done this medication, I'll delete it. When really what they're gonna wanna do is edit the medication. So they'll click on edit They'll change, are you currently taking this medication to no? And then they'll assign it a usage end date to be the, 
current month. So I'm going to delete that. What I'm going to implement is a button that does that automatically for them so that they won't accidentally delete the medication. And what happens when they end, they stop taking the medication is that when we return to their dashboard, this medication will be removed from their current medications list. And also, when we go to their medications list page, it will be moved from current medications to previous medications. So, that being said, going to go back here. I think that first I'm going to focus on controller because all these actions of editing and deleting medications are happening under our medications controller um, these requests um, these reflect the HTTP requests so that when our server receives an HTTP request from the browser that matches one of these controller methods, like for instance, get medications slug edit which is the request sent when you click on this edit button it then executes the code inside this block which renders our medications slash edit medication view So that has a partial in it, application slash edit medication form. And this is the actual code for the edit medication form. So what this code does is loads up the form and then it populates the fields with the attributes of the medication that we're working with, which is the medication that we found by our slug param. I know that may be a little hard to follow, but bear with me. I'll take that out real quick. So for to create 
a button that automatically changes the params, we won't even need to render a form, which is nice. What we'll have to do Hmm, it's a good question. What do we have to do? So we're on this page right here. This is our slug. Did I move it over actually? Let's get responsive with it. Boom. Look at that. I love bootstrap. It's not super pretty, but does its job well enough and it can be fixed to look super pretty which it will be in the near future <clears throat> so right now we're on the page that shows our medication details what we want is when we click stop taking medication So I'm just going to kind of pseudocode this a little bit. I'm going to call it stop. Med. We know we're going to have to use find by slug because we'll still have that slug option in there. We don't know exactly which medication we'll be stopping, we just know it will be a medication. Then we're going to use our the validation method that I had written before, which is located here. So that checks if the medication that we find by the slug if that user ID of that medication is not equal to the current user ID, which means the ID of the user that's logged in, they will be redirected to the home page and told that they don't have permission to view or edit other users' content. And then if they're not logged in, they'll be told they've been logged out and redirected to the home page. So we know we need those two. We know we're going to change. And I'm sorry if this text is too light there. Hopefully zooming in will help. Change um, currently taking oops, that's a there we go to false change or assign End date to current month 
and year. I'm only measuring month and year for start and end dates because most times people can't remember what exactly what day they had started a medication. Like I don't remember the specific date I started taking a medication, but I could guess a month. Um, unfortunately, Ruby doesn't like that. So I have to append a day on the end. And I just add plus one to the end. So Oops, I went by it. Um, sign end date as current month and year, then add where the pen. And then I think we should redirect to, I think we should redirect to the list medications page because that's where they'll actually see change taking place so I think that's a good start what will this do this will automatically assign values that show user has stopped taking medication. Although, so here's one thing that I'm thinking about. If, if someone stopped taking a medication, normally they have a reason that they stopped taking a medication. So maybe instead we should ask them if they want to record a new reaction. In association with this change, this update. That may make more sense. So let's see. I don't even know if I have a Plug. I really don't know 
if I've styled this at all. This is the only place I'd ever use this. I don't I don't have a link to this anywhere in my program right now. So this could be the place that I actually use it. Because I didn't honestly think that I would need to. Um So let's go for it. Let's do this. So let's redirect. To there. Right. So. Gosh. Ugh, stop it. And there we go. I need to interpolate because I forgot to do that before and was really confused why my stuff wasn't working and then it hit me oh my gosh it's because I didn't interpolate so we're redirecting to reactions new and looking at this from the outside it doesn't make much sense to do it this way but hmm, no We aren't going to want it to go right back to the reaction. We want it to go back to the medication. Right? Let's try. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, we could do that. That looks okay, actually. Because it does have the present medication status, and then it'll show you that it's not any longer on your list of medications. Okay, so this will work out fine for what we want. Great. And now I actually have a reason to keep this in here, which is nice. <laughs> Before I didn't, not really. Um, okay, cool. So, all we have to do really is update. Currently taking Oops. Oh my goodness. False. Uh 
and then now we could just do um, time dot now dot oh boy what the heck is it Here we go. This is what I'm looking for. There's this crazy method that lets you, ooh, might not let me. Lets you convert There we go. Um, you know what? I might not even need this actually. <laughs> it's mainly for show. It lets you convert things from the regular date and time format to something more presentable and you can use different codes to get different conversions um, so we'll see if just putting time.new will get us what we want and if not we'll try something else that's what it's all about, right? Um, yeah. So now we have to build a button for it. Let's go back. And here's our new reaction. Look at that. So look at that. I'm going to delete it though. Now it's gone. Okay. Adding a button. going to put text column I'm going to make them size 3 and I'm going to expand this page a little so it looks nicer there we go cool size 3 stop med stop taking medication Class button, medications, med slug. I think we're good. Now, when you want to get CSS or HTML to refresh on your page, oops. Looks like three is not enough for this one. I'm going to have to make this one four. I always do a hard reset 
because sometimes it takes a little while. So here we have the three buttons. Looking nice. You can see over here, you have all of your medications, current three, previous one, in our dashboard, three current medications. Oh my gosh, okay, let's see if this works. I'm going to click it. Oh gosh, here we go. Um, why would we stop taking Wellbutrin? Too many side effects. I had too many bad reactions to do this drug. Wasn't worth taking anymore. Record. Oh yeah! Look at this. Present medication status. Wellbutrin is on your list of previous medications. Return to Wellbutrin medication detail page. I am no longer taking Wellbutrin. Nice. Oh, it didn't record the date though, so that's something we have to go look into. Um, and there's also this button still there, so I should do a conditional hide if it has well, I'll hide it if um, currently taking equals false. But let's go and look at the other stuff. So, user dashboard, only two medications list. Woo! Awesome. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Okay, so this stuff looks also I wanna look at this. Hold on. It's a little smushed. There we go, cool. So, ERB interpolation, if currently taking and so that means it should only show if currently taking the medication. Let's see. Oops, I didn't put an argument in there. At med dot. There we go. Nice. Look at that. Now we still have to figure out what's going on here. So this didn't save right. I 
had troubles with the date before. So let's Do I want to do this? No. No, I'm going to do... I'm going to go in here. D and D. For the binding dot pry right there and I'm taking out the quotes because I'm thinking maybe that could be what set it off. We shall see. So let's go to another one. Let's stop taking this one. Now. At mid. So that looks like that's working. I wonder if it was the quotes. Because you see here end date and that's filled in for March 6, 2019. See what our medication details say. Um, I am hold on a second. Purpose of here we go. Here. Option Z on Mac is um, good for text wrapping in Visual Studio Code. Just learned that yesterday. <sighs> Love it. Okay, so I have this. If med start date. I began taking med name in med start date. That's the month, that's the year. And oh, okay, so this, sorry. This whole thing is wrapped in an if else statement. So this is if med currently taking. This is the else statement. So if med start date and ended in, if med end date, then they're supposed to show the end date. So Yeah, uh, hopefully this works. Test content record on the list of previous meds. Yay, it worked. It was just the quotes that were holding me up. 
So time dot new is does not act as a string. It's an object. Oh man, this is this is exciting. Whew. And now my button's gone. Go back to my dashboard. One left. Medications. Three previous. One current. Yeah, this is very exciting. And I can't wait to turn this in. I'm going to sign off and get ready to do my walkthrough. So thank you for watching. All right. Bye.